Hello and welcome to this tutorial on converting binary to binary coded decimal, or BCD for short. In this video, I will explain what BCD is, I will show an example for converting binary to BCD, I will show an example for serial double dabble hardware, as well as combinatorial double dabble hardware. For this video, I expect that you know how to left shift binary numbers and that you know what ROM is, which is read only memory. So let's start with this scenario. You have just successfully calculated 15 times 15 on an 8 bit CPU and you got this as your answer. We know that this answer is correct because we can add 128 to 64 to 32 and 1 and we get 225, which is the correct answer. But how do we get the CPU to do this conversion for us? So how do we make the CPU convert this binary value into base 10 so that it can be easily read? So we want to convert the binary into 225. Now each digit in the decimal value can be a value between 0 and 9. So if we want to represent that in binary, we must represent each digit using 4 bits. So we can do that giving us 2, 2, 5. And this is what's known as binary coded decimal, or BCD, since these are a binary representation of the decimal value. So how then do we convert binary to BCD? There are many different ways to do this. There's double dabble, modulo by 10, division by powers of 10, or bitwise division by 10. Now note that these three methods here all require division, and division is generally quite a slow operation on a simple CPU. So that just leaves the first method, which is double dabble. So what is double dabble? The double dabble method takes on one bit at a time from the input and converts it into BCD. There are two ways of doing this, either sequential or combinatorial. I will do an example using the sequential method. The rules for sequential double dabble are that you start with the output BCD values all equal to zero, then you iterate eight times, so once for every bit in the input. The rules for each iteration are that you first multiply the BCD digits by two, which is simply a left shift. If a BCD digit is more than 9, then we subtract 10 and propagate a carry into the next digit. And finally, we shift the topmost bit of the input into the lowest bit of the lowest BCD digit. Then we repeat this iteration until all of the bits of the input have been used. So to start with, the output, which is our BCD values, on the left, they will be equal to zero. Then the input on the right will be equal to the binary for 225. So for the first iteration, we start by multiplying by 2. So 0 multiplied by 2 equals 0. Then we shift in the topmost bit from our input. This bit happens to be a 1, so the bottommost digit becomes a 1. For the second iteration, we start by multiplying by 2, so 1 multiplied by 2 gives us 2. Then we shift in the topmost bit from our input, this happens to be a 1, so the 2 becomes a 3. For the third iteration, we multiply 3 by 2, and that gives us 6. Then we shift in a bit from the input, again this happens to be a 1, so the 6 becomes a 7. For the fourth iteration, we multiply by 2, so 7 multiplied by 2 gives us 14. Since 14 is more than 9, we must subtract 10 and propagate a carry into the next digit. So 14 subtract 10 
gives us 4, then we insert a carry into the second digit. Then finally we shift in another bit from our input, this time it's a 0, so the 4 stays as a 4. For the fifth iteration, we multiply by 2, so 1 becomes 2, then 4 becomes 8, then we shift in another bit from the input, again this happens to be 0, so the 8 remains as an 8. So for the 6th iteration, we again multiply by 2, so the 2 goes to 4, and the 8 goes to 16. Now since 16 is more than 10, we must subtract 10 and propagate a carry into the next digit. So subtracting 10 from 16 gives us 6, and we add a carry to the next digit, turning the 4 into a 5. Then finally we insert a bit from the input, this happens to be 0, so the 6 remains as a 6. For the 7th iteration, the 5 goes to 10, and the 6 goes to 12. Now since both of these values are more than 9, we must subtract 10 from both of them and propagate a carry to the next digit. So the 10 turns into 0, and the 12 turns into 2. Then we propagate a carry from the lowest digit to the second digit, turning the 0 into a 1, and we propagate a carry from the second digit to the third digit, so that third digit then becomes a 1. Then finally we shift in another bit from the input, and again it's a 0, so the 2 remains as a 2. For the final 8th iteration, we multiply by 2, so 1 becomes 2, 1 becomes 2 again, then 2 becomes 4. Then we shift in the final bit from our input, which is a 1, so the 4 becomes a 5. Now that completes our iterations, since there are no more bits left in the input, so this must be our final answer. And it is, as you can see, it is 2, 2, 5, which is correct. Now, as you may be aware, some CPUs are able to convert values into BCD using hardware. So how would we design hardware to perform this BCD conversion? So we need hardware to perform each iteration on each digit. So since there are only 10 different values for each BCD digit, we can write those out in a table. Then we can write down what that BCD digit would become after an iteration, which is simply multiplying by 2, and we can also write down whether or not that digit will produce a carry. We can store all of this information inside of a ROM. So this here is the hardware that is required for a single BCD digit. We first have a 4-bit register, and this stores our BCD value. This then goes into our ROM, which converts it into the next iteration, which then feeds back into the same 4-bit register. We then also have a carry in, which comes from the previous digit and connects to the 4-bit register, as well as a carry out out, which comes from the ROM and goes to the next BCD digit. For an 8-bit value, we require three of these in a row. So the leftmost digit is the highest BCD digit, and the rightmost digit is the lowest BCD digit. We then input our binary value into the lowest BCD digit. But what about the method that I haven't discussed yet, which is combinatorial double dabble? Combinatorial is similar to sequential, but it is faster because it does some of the iterations effectively in parallel. This here is the layout for a combinatorial BCD converter. At the top, we have our 8 bits for our binary input. Then at the bottom, we have the BCD output, which is 3 digits, each being 4 bits. And then we have 4 constant zeros alongside our input. These zeros pad out the length of the binary input so that it has an equal length to that of the number of bits in the BCD output. Now, some of you may notice that 
there are only five layers of ROMs that the data must go through. And if each of these ROMs take about the same amount of delay as the ROMs in the sequential BCD converter, then the combinatorial method will be faster since the data only has to travel through five ROMs instead of eight. So, in summary, sequential requires less hardware since the data is fed into the same ROM multiple times, but it is slower due to only being able to do one iteration at a time. Combinatorial, on the other hand, requires more hardware since there's one ROM for every iteration, but it is slightly faster since it can do some of the iterations in parallel. Parallel. And that's everything I wanted to cover. If you've made it this far into the video, be sure to like and subscribe and join the YourCL Discord, which is linked in the description below, as well as commenting your favourite type of cereal. Mine is Bran Flakes. And with that, cheerio!